Hello everyone, welcome back to the series on programming robot mechanics. In this video, we are going to work on joint space point to point linear trajectory with parabolic blend. So that's a big name. All right, so let's get to this. Now in the previous videos, we have worked on point to point quintic and point to point cubic trajectories. And in this one, we are going to work on a linear trajectory. A linear trajectory is simply a linear extrapolation. It's simply a line that we draw between two points that are given the initial point and the final point. And that so forms the difference between the other planning algorithms that we just wrote in the previous videos. Now, uh, what is this parabolic blend that we add? Now, if we simply interpolate the joint from initial to final position, there is going to be discontinuous values. The velocity is going to start from zero and increase to a very high value in such a, such a short period of time, like at t equals zero, it's zero, and then it just suddenly jumps to t uh, five. Now that doesn't really happen in real life mechanics or robots, as we can say. Therefore, we introduce a, a small amount of parabolic uh, curve at the initial at and at the final place. That way we have a parabolic blend and that adjusts the acceleration and the velocity so that they don't jump to a very high value at the beginning. So that's how it is. Velocity can, uh, ex in a very characteristic feature is in, as since it's a linear curve, linear interpolation, the velocity in this linear range is constant and the acceleration is also constant because we have it acceleration is actually zero because velocity is not changing. So acceleration is zero, but there is some acceleration in this initial and this final part over here. So that's what it is. Now, what other difference that we have in the cubic trajectory planning, we were uh, supplying the user was uh, giving the function, the initial position and the final position along with the initial velocity and final velocity. And in the quintic, we introduce two more variables that a user can pass. These are ex initial acceleration and final acceleration. Now we are going to restrict ourselves to much more. Yeah, we are going to restrict ourselves much more. We are only going to pass the initial velocity, uh, initial position and the final position for the linear interpolation. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so let's just first copy this much part and let's paste it over here. And let's change some names. Okay, so we have this over here. Let's take this thing like the degree of freedom of the robot. Hmm. Okay, now we have to follow this equation right over here. This is for the equation that we're going to follow. But first of all, let's calculate the speed of the trajectory, the constant speed that is going to be. So, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's simply the slope, we can say. Okay, qf minus q0. And one, we are not going to divide by one because the we have assumed that the time is actually zero till one. So there is no need to divide it over here. It's just the subtraction that we have done. Okay, now we need to think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are three time instances that we need to work for. It's this T zero and then it's T B and then it's T F minus T B and then we have the final T. So we need to know uh, particularly two values, this T B and this T F minus T B. Let's rename these as T one and let's rename that as T two. A user has no preference whatsoever in how much time the blend is going to take place. So we'll just assume that it's just going to be 10% um, of what the value of M is. Like it's going to be the initial 10% is going to be the parabolic blend and the final 10% is also going to be the parabolic blend. Okay, so let's uh, create that. Okay. Now we can do this. Um, Okay, let's get this thing. 
must have the time space steps and the q q d q double d that we are going to return and now let's loop over the time steps and see okay also we are going to make use of these equations of motion so to say that that these equations of motion assume that the acceleration is constant and yeah they assume that and using that assumption we calculate the velocity the final velocity that should be we u d equals initial plus a times t and what is going to be the distance initial distance plus u t initial speed times t plus half a t square is the acceleration over here so i think we can use these equations to calculate uh, the different values that we have okay so in this for loop we are going to have three conditions the initial blend after the initial blend that is the linear and after the linear part that is the final blend so let's add these conditions first um, and then else okay all right so okay hmm. so we have that and all right now the first thing that we need to compute into compute v and r like the velocity and the position the first thing that we need is the acceleration that we need to compute now acceleration is going to be dependent on the t1 and t2 that we have chosen so let's see how that can be calculated that's going to be filled up something like this like qdd colon comma i let's see what the equation for this would be hmm. okay so uh, all right um hmm. this is what is going on overall we are getting to a velocity v using this qf minus q0 we are getting to this velocity v and we are starting from a zero so let's not write zero like we are starting from zero so there should be minus zero and that is going to be divided by t1 because this is the time that it took uh right yeah this is the time that it took now we don't have a zero over here so um yeah let's just remove that because we don't have a zero and we won't have a zero now we have the acceleration at the ith instant right now this is also going to be going to remain constant throughout right all right so instead of writing this v over t1 over here let's just compute the acceleration and write it above so we don't have to compute it again and again right okay we will do this by t1 yeah as simple as that and we can just place this with a okay now we need to set the velocity that is going to be equal to uh, using the equation of motion over here at plus initial velocity initial is zero for this case for the before initial blend it's just simply a times t so let's compute that a times t so are we correct uh, right i think we are doing okay and now we need to compute the position that is going to be computed using this formula over here initial position vt and half at square so let's compute that Zero. Yes. <clears throat> um, okay, so that is the initial velocity. Like v naught is the initial velocity, and that is equal to zero. So we're going to ignore this term at all. Half a t square is the thing that we are concerned with, so we are going to calculate only that. Okay, so this is done. Now something similar is going to happen with this as well. But okay, let's fill it line by line, so we don't just get ahead of ourselves. Okay, and this is filled by n p dot zeros. So this acceleration is zero in this. and this is filled by v because we have a constant velocity and this is going to be filled up by hmm. 
Okay, so in order to compute this value, like, like we can use it over here, the acceleration is going to be zero. So it's simply initial position plus velocity times t. The velocity times t, we can adjust for it like this, but we need to see what is going to be the initial position for this. The initial position for this constraint over here should be equal to the position, position that we have attained using this. Now this position can be obtained using T1 uh, minus one. Since we have been using T1 till T1 minus one. So this is the initial position that we're going to get. Right, okay. Now let's fill this one. And this is going to be minus one multiplied by, because we are now slowing down with the same acceleration. And this should be equal to minus one times A times T. Okay, one thing. Uh, we also need to have an initial velocity over here, V naught plus AT, right? So we are going to have this. I'm going to add this up. Right. And let's now fill the position and that is going to equal T, um, T2 minus one, right? And That is the initial position v naught times t. We require this now, and v naught times t is going to equal this, and then the half a t square term that is going to be subtracted. Okay, five times minus one, so times t. Okay, now let's check if we are doing everything right. Seems right for now. Let's just work with this and see if we get any errors when we are checking it. So the final thing that we need to do is return all these values. Okay, looks good. Now let's try running this. We have this linear and linear over here. We only need to pass in the initial position and the final position. Uh, okay. Right, now let's try and run this. All right, running this now. Okay, so we have some error. Let's see what these are. Okay, so one thing that I noted, T2 is not actually equal to what we want. It should be equal to M minus M times 0.9. This is a uh, 0.1. This is going to be equal to M times 0.9, but to keep readability clear, this is this needs to equal m minus m times 0.1 because this is the final part of the acceleration. Like m is the total time instances that we need, and m minus the 0.1 percent. So that's why now that's what we need to land m t2 over here in this region. Okay, and let's run this again and see if it works. Okay, still the same error. Let's see what we have to make the changes. Okay, there were two errors that we needed to adjust account for. First of all, the LIF condition should be I greater than or equal to T1 because we want to, if we are going till T1, now we need to step into T1. That's why it's greater than or equal to T1. And we need to apply the integer over here since these are now integer values. These need to be integer values because the indices that we're working with is I. And we are also using them over here. So these need to be integer values or positive integers. So to say. Now let's run this and let's see what are the errors that we are getting. Okay, so we can see the position is already a bit not correct. If we were to say the position is not changing linearly, but it's it's changing by some amount, then remaining constant and then changing again. So this isn't what we intended to do. So that's something to work on. Velocity is, um, this is also a strange behavior. Like it's starting, it's still zero. Like till the part that we were, then till T1, the velocity is zero and then it's increasing. This is also something not required. The velocity should have been increased something in a trapezoidal. This should have been a trapezoidal kind of graph. Acceleration is seems correct, I think. Um, so for some the acceleration is some value and then it goes to zero and then we have again some deceleration and all. 
Yeah, right. Acceleration seems okay, but we need to, I think, work on velocity and position. So let's see where are we going wrong. Okay, so these are the changes that we made. Uh, there are some changes that we, there were some mistakes that we were making. First, the T1 and T2 are, should be integers. That's okay. And the acceleration that we're calculating is not with respect to the index. Other, earlier, we were dividing it by T1. This implies that we are dividing V by index indices. So we are dividing it by indices. Instead, we should have been, we are now dividing it by time steps of T1. Now, this is actual time that is being taken for the acceleration to be of that value. Like the velocity is taking this much time to achieve the value of V. Okay, one other thing that we need to do, the T equals time steps I is not going to be a common across all these. We need to adjust the time according to the segment we are on. All these equations work using a time instance or time segment. So therefore, in order to get those segments, we have to derive the value of time for each of these um, cases, like till T1, if we are doing this and tell T2, like we, if we are doing this and using these values, the result comes out to be correct and no errors as such as well. So here is it. If we see it now, uh, if we can see, if we can observe, it should be a parabolic towards the start and a straight line and then a slight parabola towards the end. Now the parabola is not that visible because the values are so much like the values are so little. We are not able to see that parabola, but there the parabola does exist and we can observe it slightly. The velocity is also increasing linearly till some value then remains constant and then goes down. So it is a trapezoidal graph that we wanted to see. Acceleration, well, we can see the acceleration values are too much. This is because the time segment that we have adjusted is zero till one. That's the reason the acceleration values are too high in magnitude. There are some values till some amount of time and then they go on to zero and then again they come out as the same value that they have. Now, right, now the some reflection over this would be, we can see that the joint acceleration value is decreasing in such a short time frame. Like, yeah, a really short time frame and the acceleration values decreases very much. Now this will introduce a great amount of jerk if we were to say. now. That's one thing that we need to consider. I'm not sure if we use the concept of jerk in robot trajectories, but in autonomous car trajectories, jerk is an important value because it decides um, qualitatively a comfort of a passenger that is sitting in a car. But that's for autonomous cars. I'm not really sure about the robot arms, but nonetheless, everything seems to be working fine in this. All right, so I'll just close this. Okay. So I think we have pretty much done what we require to do in this video. We have implemented a point to point linear trajectory planner with parabolic blend in the next video. Now these three are covered in the next video. We will try to extend these three or one of them one by one into via points trajectory planning in the via points trajectory planning. As I discussed before, we are going to use some points, not just two points, which we are interpolating between. Instead, we are going to have multiple points through which the robot has to pass. And that is going to be a little slightly difficult or maybe slightly different from this. But we'll see. Let's see what we get in the next video then. All right. See you in the next video. Bye.